can start. So, we have to read it. Yes, Rangada. Okay. So, Pallavi, Tuesday is your day. Fine, Tuesday class. <laughs> Our mind is Maya. Shall I start? Yeah, start. For mind is Maya, Sat Asat. There is a field of embrace of the true and the false, the existent and the non existent. And it is in that ambiguous field that mind seems to reign. But even in its own reign, it is in truth a diminished consciousness. It is not part of the original and supremely originating power of the eternal. Even if mind is able to reflect some image of essential truth in its substance, yet the dynamic force and action of truth appears in it always broken and divided. All mind can do is to piece together the fragments or deduce a unity. Truth of mind is only a half-truth or a portion of a puzzle. Mental knowledge is always relative, partial and inconclusive, and in its outgoing action and creation come out still more confused in its steps or precise only in narrow limits and by imperfect piecings together. Even in this diminished consciousness, the divine manifests as a spirit in mind, just as he moves as a spirit in life, or dwells still more obscurely as a spirit in matter. But not here is his full dynamic revelation, not here the perfect identities of the eternal. Only when we cross the border into a larger luminous consciousness and self-aware substance where divine truth is a native and not a stranger, will there be revealed to us the master of our existence in the imperishable integral truth of his being and his powers and his workings. Only there too will his works in us assume the flawless movement of his unfailing supramental purpose. Okay, so this is the paragraph which we now read in The first sentence, for mind is Maya, such as Now, at the lowest level, we are in the physical world and the principle here is multiplicity and the, what you see is not the reality. Okay? So, when you go to the second level of the, uh, when, when Sri speaks of Maya, he is talking about the second level of the spiritual planes. Okay? So spiritual plane is the second level and the supermental plane is the third level. So, mind is Maya and what is Maya? In illusion creating, okay? it, it, the, it undergoes the principle of one becomes the many, and when one, one becomes the many, the distortion starts coming in. It's like a <coughs> mirror, which is one full secret mirror, it is actually going to give you a correct picture. But the moment that mirror is broken up, okay, it becomes, you know, what you will see is a broken image. You will not see the full uh, image. Okay. So that, that way it is half truth. Sat asat. Okay. At the highest level is total truth. At the lowest level is the broken truth. In the middle, it is a little bit of both. Okay. And this is middle is a little bit of both is the Maya is mind is in the Maya. That same Maya it also graduates. So when it comes down to the physical world, it becomes total Maya. Okay. The, Multiplicity causes the wrong way of things. And remember, mind is the one that divides. Mind is the one that makes the one into the many. In the super mind, there is total oneness. As soon as it enters the over mind, the multiplicity begins already at that level. So, but mind is maya, sat, asat. There is a field of embrace of the true and the false, a mixture. The existent and the non-existent. In other words, there are half truths. We have discussed that many times. Even in the physical world, there are realities which are half real, half unreal. Shadow, okay. the blue of the sky. The blue of the sky, there is no such thing as blue of the sky. 
And yet it's still so real. Okay? The rainbow nearly half close. So that's what is in this. At that level, these examples that I gave you just now are in the physical world. But in the spiritual world also, we are not seeing the full reality. Although you go to the self, it is not the full reality. It's only half way. In the field of embrace of the true and the false, the existent and the non-existent. And it is in that ambiguous field that mind seems to reign. Because at the supermental level, mind does not reign. It is a supermind that reigns. But even in its own reign, it is in truth a diminished consciousness. Diminished consciousness and it also degraded or a broken consciousness. It is not the original, it is not part of the original and supremely originating power of the eternal. So which is this original, supremely originating power of the eternal? It is supermind. It is a supremely originating power of the eternal. The Satchananda is not the original power. Because such an is static. When you go there, it is static. It has to come through the supermind to create a world. Supermind is the originating power of the eternal. Even if mind is able to reflect some image of essential truth in its substance, yet the dynamic force and action of truth appears in it always broken and divided. So this you have discussed many times. In mind, even in the lower levels of mind, some reflection of the higher planes does come in. But it is not complete. It's only a reflection. A reflection can be part reflection and it can be also full reflection, but only if in time. Okay? It comes and disappears. So the uh, ambiguity can be of two types. One can be you are seeing a very good picture but it lasts only for a short time. And the other one is, it can last for a longer time, but it is half picture, it's not a full picture. That's what I was saying. <clears throat> Even if mind is able to reflect some image of essential truth in its substance, not the word substance, huh? it is reflected in substance. It's not reflected in nothing. Penetration can't appear, in, it has to have a medium, and that medium is the substance itself. Yet, the dynamic force and action of truth appears in it, or is broken and divided. In other words, at the spiritual levels, you don't have the whole power to do what you want with the body mind. You can't do anything permanent. All mind can do is to piece together the fragments or reduce a unit. Yeah? Just one minute, Gada. Yeah. Tell me. Hello, Rangada. Yes. yes, yes. No, no, just need to check. Everyone can hear Rangada properly. I can't. No, I didn't follow what you said. Just one minute. Your net is weak, Tarika, because we all. Because your and voice is also coming uh, broken. And that ah. voice is absolutely clear. Your net has a problem. Ah. Okay. Okay, fine. Check, okay. check your connections. Yeah. My, yeah. Okay, my okay, I have solved my problem by changing the sound. Okay, I've got a new sound system. I also had the same problem, but my sound system was defective. So now I have got a perfect sound system. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Sorry for breaking. Sorry. No, no, no problem. Okay. Then, even if mind is able to reflect some image of essential truth in a substance, yet the dynamic force and action of truth appears in totally broken and divided. In the spiritual planes of consciousness, some amount of power is there and it does affect the body mind life. You can have, but not fully. The mind can become pure, even the vital can become pure, but the body remains exactly what it is. Okay? The body remains, even the body can change to a certain extent. 
like said his body became absolutely golden color okay although he had not settled his consciousness in the super mind he had glimpses of super mind but he was not able to that establishing happened much later okay now mental knowledge is always relative partial and incomplete this mental knowledge he is not really talking about the uh, scientific knowledge and uh, material knowledge but also spiritual knowledge even that is only relative partial and incomplete its outgoing action and creation come out still more confused in its steps or precise only in narrow limits and by imperfect piecing is to it there you are okay is explaining very clearly outgoing action when you are consciousness is settled at the spiritual level you have an action in the physical world but that action is confused in its steps or precise only narrow limits and by imperfect piecing is to it okay so no the word precise only in narrow limits in other words you can have a precise reflection of the higher planes but it will be there for a very short while that is the reason how shrimdo from the overmind consciousness he was able to know so much about the supermental even at james is not only that there is no record but he must have certainly gone into the supermental for short periods of time Okay. Mother was doing that work, and she was she finished the work halfway through. And only I said, the work of supermental transformation has been postponed. It will be there only for the next. And what is that work of supermental manifestation? Uh, um, transformation, complete change of the body into a supermental body. Not the biological body, but the supermental body. So, the divine, even in this diminished consciousness, the divine manifests as a spirit in mind, just as he moves as a spirit in life and dwells still more obscurely as a spirit in matter. So, even in matter, the divine is there, but hiding very, very well. In the vital, is hiding a little. less in the mind even less but only in the spiritual planes he makes himself more available more visible and finally the total visibility and the complete picture is only in the supermental okay <coughs> so he is saying the divine manifests as spirit in mind just as he moves as a spirit in life and dwells still more of spirit in his mind but not here he is a full dynamic revelation so what is he talking about here means he is talking of the spiritual planes okay even there the full dynamic revelation is not there dynamic revelation is there you do get power you do get ananda but not the full okay not here the perfect identity is with the eternal only when we cross the border into a larger luminous consciousness and self aware substance where divine truth is a native and not a stranger will there be revealed to us the master of our existence in the imperishable interior truth of his being and his powers and workings we will go step by step the big sentence when we cross the border in another a larger one, luminous another one question yes yes Yes. Why yes. it is perfect identities? Why in plural? Um, Not here the perfect identities of the eternal. I am missing one minute. Yeah, perfect identity of the eternal. You can identify yourself with sub. You can identify yourself with consciousness. You can identify yourself with the power and also the and probably that's what it means. Okay, the identification. Okay. Uh, can be with one part of such an because he has discussed this in life divine when you identify your individual soul identifies more with sat in such an angle then your philosophy becomes mayavad when you identify yourself more with the consciousness okay 
then the purusha pravriti experience of the sankhya becomes more obvious to you and when you identify yourself with the uh, the power aspect okay, that could be the tantric realization and when you identify yourself with the ananda aspect okay then it could be the philosophy of the vaishnava leela probably that's what you mean by perfect identities okay it's a good question i also didn't think of it but right now you would you can identify yourself in many ways okay. <clears throat> only when we cross the border into a larger luminous consciousness what is border is talking about he is talking about the border between the over mind and the super mind okay larger luminous consciousness and self aware substance now not that hmm? the substance of the consciousness in the over mind is self aware the self aware goes on increasing 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 to a certain extent even the our substance of body is self aware in a very obscure manner why do i say that because see your kidneys are functioning perfectly well it seems to know exactly what it has to do it purifies your blood so there is intention so when there is intention you can say that there is self awareness okay <laughs> yeah. the heart also functions like that okay it is pumping blood and removing all the uh, the, the lungs it removes the stale air from the lungs and thrown out there is a very clear intention there is a um, very clear aim so that is the consciousness okay the substance is a body substance itself is conscious of itself in a certain very uh, very obscure manner the best example of that is when the body gets cut okay it immediately knows that this is dangerous for me and it starts sealing the cut okay? by coagulation of the blood okay so but this self aware substance becomes more and more in the spiritual planes and absolutely full in the supramental self aware substance where the divine truth is native so that's interesting the consciousness has a native level and it when it is reflected in the lowers it is not a native level because there it is full but in the lower levels it is partly there partly not just as in matter the divine is there but it's not a native field the native field for the divine is the transcendent okay so that's what he is explaining then he is saying only when we cross the border into a larger luminous consciousness and self aware substance where divine truth is a native and not a stranger so very clearly he is talking of the supramental plane because he is talking of truth okay he said take care you remember his um, name is the supramental truth consciousness is one word he uses okay gnosis g n o s i s the word supramental he doesn't like much because it can be misinterpreted but gnosis and truth consciousness cannot be misinterpreted okay? so it very clearly he is talking of the real idea also rangada yes that's right the real idea also is in the supermind that's right so will be there revealed to us as a master of our existence in the imperishable interior to the is being and his powers and his works only there there money in the supermind to will his works in us assume the flawless movement of the unfailing supermind purpose and what is the supermind purpose even to change the body into a divine body that's it supermind purpose okay we go to the next one so go on. Um, one is the uh, Rangada. Yes. Tell me. Ah, uh, here the uh, Alvi had asked now identities. So here, if we see, he is saying our existence in the imper- imperishable integral truth of his being and his powers and his workings, exactly as you said. That's right. Imperishable. The being, powers, and workings. Identity yeah. in all the three. 
That's right. Exactly as you said, just that he has himself. Uh, that answer is answered here also. That yes, exactly. So it's a confirmation. <laughs> okay, Ashanti, will you read the next one? Yes, Ranga. Okay, go ahead. But that is the end of a long and difficult journey. And the master of works does not wait till then to meet the seeker on the path of yoga and put his secret or half shown hand upon him and upon his inner life and actions. Already he was there in the world as the originator and receiver of works behind the dense veils of the inconscient disguised in force of life, visible to the mind through simple cordheads and figures. It may well be in these disguises that he first meets the soul destined to the way of the integral yoga, or even wearing still vaguer masks, he may be conceived by us as an ideal or mentalized as an ab abstract power of love, good, beauty or knowledge, or as we turn our feet towards the way, he may come to us, sorry, he may come to us veiled as the call of humanity or a will in things that drives towards the deliverance of the world from the grasp of darkness and falsehood and death and suffering, the great quaternary of the ignorance. Then, after we have entered the path, he envelops us with his wide and mighty, liberating impersonality, or moves near to us with the face and form of a personal body. In and around us, we feel a power that upholds and protects and cherishes. We hear a voice that guides. A conscious will greater than ourselves rules us. An imperative force moves our thought and actions and our very body. An ever widening consciousness assimilates ours. A living light of knowledge lights all within, or a beatitude invades us. Our mightiness presses from above, concrete, mass, massive, and overpowering, and penetrates and pours itself into the very stuff of our nature. A peace sits there, a light, a bliss, a strength, a greatness. Or their relations personal, intimate as life itself. He does love and encompassing like the sky, deep like deep waters. A friend walks at your side. A lover is with us in a heart secrecy. A master of the work and the ordeal points our way. A creator of things uses us as his instrument. We are in the arms of the eternal mother. All these most seizable aspects in which the ineffable meets us are truths and not mere helpful symbols or useful imagination. But as we progress, the first imperfect formulations in our experience yield to a larger vision of the one truth that is behind them. At each step, their mere mental masks are shed and they acquire a larger, a profounder, a more intimate significance. At last, on the supramental borders, all these goddesses combine their psychic forms and with, without at all uh, ceasing to be qualities together. On this path, the divine as aspects have not revealed themselves only in order to be cast away. They are not temporary spiritual conveniences or compromises with, a, with an illusory consciousness or dream figures mysteriously cast upon us by the incommunicable superconscience of the absolute. On the contrary, their power increases and their absoluteness reveals itself as they draw near to the truth from which they escape. It's almost like poetry, Rangada. Yeah. Pardon? It's almost like poetry. Yes. Yeah, the whole like... paragraph is like poetry. <laughs> Absolutely. It flows can be marvelous. Achha. Now, very interesting in this paragraph. Of course, what Rajasthra says, Shemdi is describing his own, uh, his own experiences. Okay. And he makes it very general. It may be, it can be said, things like that. But he is describing. I'll tell you each one, whatever he's saying, I'll give you the experiences that he had. Okay, so it's very clear what he is. He is talking about his own path. Because he is the first one to have trod the path of the integral yoga. So he is giving his own examples. I'm reading each sentence, okay? But that is the end of a long and difficult journey. What is the end of it? The supermetal realization. That is very difficult, not easy. But that is the end of a long and difficult journey. And the master of works 
does not wait till then to meet the seeker on the path of yoga and put his secret or half shown hand upon him and upon his life and actions. So what Sri Ji is saying is that the divine is also eager to meet you and he comes and meets you even lower down from the different lower planes. Okay. So, <coughs> Very clear what he is saying. Okay. You are also keen to meet him, but he is also keen to help you when he comes down. Okay. Already he was there in the world as the originator and receiver of works behind the dense waves of the inconscient, disguised in force as light, visible to the mind through symbol, godheads, and figures. He is there everywhere in the inconscient, in life as well as in the mind. Visible to the mind through symbol goddess. Symbol goddess, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, Krishna, okay, all these are the goddess. Ma, Maheshwari, Saraswati, whatever you want, all of the gods and goddesses. It may well be in these disguises that it first meets the soul destined to the way of the interior. That's what he's saying. You meet the divine on the lower planes also. The divine of the supermetal, you can meet him even in the lower planes. It may well be, but this is only for those who are ready for the integral path. Okay? In the other parts, the laws are different. It may well be in these disguises that he first meets the soul destined to the way of the integral or even Wearing still vaguer masks, he may be conceived by us as an ideal or mentalized as an abstract power of love, good, beauty, or knowledge. Now it's very obvious that when Srivastava was in London, okay, uh, he said that when he went there, there was a certain darkness that came upon him, and that darkness only vanished when he came to back to India. As soon as he stepped on the Apollo Bandar in the, in Bombay, he had a peace that descended on him and the darkness left him. So, if you are in the dark, you can only think of the divine as abstract powers. And Srivastava's poem also in those days, he, he was always a thinker. He was always a thinker and a poet. So, this is what he is talking about. You first you thought of the divine as an abstract power of love, good, beauty and knowledge. Not as a concrete example of uh, love and good and beauty. Or as we turn our feet towards the way, way with a W cap, he okay? is talking about the interior yoga. He may come to us veiled as a call of humanity or a will in things that drives towards the deliverance of the world from the grasp of darkness and falsehood and death and suffering, the great quaternary of the ignorance. Now here, he is saying first, veil the call of humanity. But for Srivastava, it came first as a call of the population in India. Okay? That was his main purpose. The humanity came a little later on, but first of all, and then he replaced humanity also with God. He says, first you are thinking for working for humanity, and then towards the end he says, no. We don't work for humanity, but for the divine only. So there is a gradation. Okay. So obviously his intention was when he came to India to work for India's independence. So that is the, not humanity at large, but humanity in India at least. Okay. Because even that time, India was in the grasp of darkness and falsehood and death and suffering. The great quaternary of the ignorance. Okay. Then, after we have now, so I'm going to use the whole great quaternary of ignorance, and in life divine, you use the quaternary of the divine consciousness. And the quaternary of the divine consciousness is Sat, Chit, Ananda, and Supermind. That's a great quaternary at the higher level, and the great quaternary at the lower level, darkness, falsehood, death, and suffering. Then, after we have entered the path, he envelops us with his wide and mighty, liberating impersonality. So, I, he's talking of the experience on the, uh, the Shankaracharya hill. 
ये एंड एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ दी इनफिनिटी द इनफिनिट द वास्ट इनफिनिटी ये एंड एक्सपीरियंस इम्पर्सनलिटी और मूव्स नियर टू अस विद द फेस एंड फॉर्म ऑफ इट्स पर्सनल गॉड हेड दे व्हाट हैपेंड टू हिम इन बरोडा when he was going in a horse carriage there were no cars in those days he was going in a horse carriage and suddenly this there was a danger of an accident and then he said the god had came out of me okay he came out of me and it seems to be a god it so it's a personal aspect okay it's a face and form of a person god so in and around us we feel a power that upholds and protects and cherishes He hear a voice and guides. He is talking about his two commandments that he had: go to Chandranagar, go to Pondicherry twice. A voice that guides. All clearly his own experiences. A conscious will greater than ourselves rules us. He had no idea what why he was being told to go to Chandranagar. Probably he never even been there, but now he is supposed to go. There. An imperative force moves our thoughts and actions, and our very body. The ever-widening consciousness accelerates ours. <coughs> the, the, the cosmic consciousness accepts and swallows up your own individual consciousness. An ever-widening consciousness assimilates ours. A living light of knowledge lights all within. Or a beatitude invades us. A mightiness rises from above, concrete, massive, and overpowering, and penetrates and poses it into the very stuff of our nature. <coughs> Maybe part of this was in jail, but later on, definitely it's a jail because there is uh, there are sonnets which say that the uh, in personality and the personal god and all that there are sonnets but they were i think written in pondicherry most of the sonnets now he will talk about the his experience in jail with sri krishna or there are relations personal intimate as life itself sweet as love and compassing like the sky deep like deep waters hmm? Sri Krishna was constantly guiding him and telling him what to do and what not to do. A friend walks by our side. A lover is with us in our hearts, secretly. A master of the world and the audience points our way. So he says, even the bars of the prison. It was Sri Krishna who was guiding him, and when he says the uh, tree. Is giving him shade. He is holding the, um, the sunshine away with his shade. Okay. So all these experiences there in the that uh, uh, what was the talk? The place where he gave this talk. Yeah. I forget the name. But all he has expressed all his. Uttar Pradesh. Ah, yeah. Uttar Pradesh. Yeah, that's Uttar Pradesh. Right. Uttar Pradesh, correct. So, a friend walks by our side. A lover is with us in our hearts. So you see, a master of the work and what he points out, creator of things, a creator of things, uses us as his instrument. We are in the arms of the eternal mother. Now, this is. Why mother? Why yes. mother? Why mother? Not divinity or something. Yes, this is also my question because in all his poems and all his uh, references to his spiritual experiences, he has not revealed anywhere that he had experience of the mother. Okay, so I am. That's also my question. But obviously, either he has had it or he is uh, adding it for the future sadhaks <laughs> because he, he insists that everybody should go through the mother. So this is my question also. We are in the arms of the eternal mother. No way there is any reference in his, uh, uh, in his uh, experiences that he had the experience of the mother. That came only afterwards. After uh, 
मैं लिखे क्यों पांडे चले ऑल दीज मोर सीजेबल एस्पेक्ट्स इन विच द इनिफेबल मीट्स अस आर ट्रूस एंड नॉट मेयर हेल्पफुल सिंबल्स और यूजफुल इमेजिनेशंस दे आर सीजेबल एस्पेक्ट्स हां यू एक्चुअली एक्सपीरियंस विद योर वाइटल एनर्जी ऑफ बॉडी यू एक्सपीरियंस दीज थिंग्स बट एज वी प्रोग्रेस that first imperfect formulations in our experience yield to a larger vision of the one truth that is behind it at each step their mere mental masks are shed and they acquire a larger profounder and more intimate significance at last on supramental borders all these godheads combine their forces and without at all ceasing to be Who are less together? Now, this is a very interesting one. In thoughts and aphorisms, there is a very interesting reference to what he is saying here. Godheads combine their forces. I don't have the reference immediately, but next time, maybe even tomorrow, I'll give you the reference to the uh, thoughts and aphorisms. He says something very interesting. He says, "Oh, Mitra, pour your love into me. I'm not giving his words. I'm giving my words." Oh, son! Okay, he addressing all the gods. Pour your light into me, and all the one by one, he appealing to all the gods. Okay, give your enjoyment to me. Finally, the last sentence is, Oh, Kali, let me not be subject to any of these gods. <laughs> so, total, not one aspect, but all the aspects, and even if you are. Um, Subject to them, then there is slavery. So he wants total freedom. So he says, "Oh, Kali, let me not be subject to any of these gods." <laughs> so that's what he means here. Godheads combine their forces, and without at all ceasing to be coalesced. On this path, the divine aspects are not real in order to be cast away. Now that's an interesting sentence because in the other yogas, you. When you go to the self, you throw away the, uh, the uh, physical world, the body mind life. You are not interested in. But Shri is saying exactly the opposite. He is saying there are ascent and integration. In the whole chapter in Nandi Vain, where the ascent, but you integrate the lower into your consciousness. You don't reject it. Yes. On this path, the divine aspects are not revealed in order to be cast away. they are not temporary spiritual convenience to our compromises but an illusory consciousness or dream figures mysteriously cast upon us by the incommunicable super consciousness of the action in the other yogas when you go to a better version of the divine you reject the lower version but here in shivadev yoga you don't reject it but you integrate it into your own because that's it an aspect of the divine Even matter is an aspect of the divine. So see how it's an aspect of the divine. That's what the divine says. Ascent and integration. <clears throat> They are not something that has to be dream figures and thrown to be thrown away. On the contrary, their power increases and their absoluteness reveals itself as they draw near to the truth from which they issue. So all these lower planes. Are issuing from the super mind, and you start understanding their significance and their purpose when you reach the highest level. Okay, so eight thirty nine. So we have to stop here today. Next time uh, tomorrow is life divine, but I just mentioned the uh, the reference to the thoughts and affirmations. Okay, so it's very interesting. We stop here today. ओके और वाह और वाह गंगादा मैसी बुक टू बॉन्ड जुड़ने बुक नंबर 2 बुक नंबर 3